by the New World Order. Oh, you didn't know? You ready? Let's go! Are you ready? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Big Daddy Cool Vinny Apicella, and I am here with your official Connecticut Panthers pregame show live here on Fat Cat Radio via the Sports Wire. We are here at beautiful Falcon Field in Meriden, Connecticut, as we get set to take on, as we get set for your reigning, defending, undisputed NEFL Colonial Conference champions, the Connecticut Panthers, taking on the Pioneer Valley Knights in New England Football League action. As of now, it is about 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, and it looks to me like the uh, coaches and everybody are getting set on, on the field. The captains are meeting. The coin toss is about to take place, which means that the uh, game is actually set to kick off at 6.35 instead of 7 p.m. So, therefore, we're going to do a very quick pregame episode for you right now before the kickoff actually takes place. Uh, Let me uh, give you the starting lineup, at least the starting starters, the starters for the offense. Uh, We have at quarterback, number three, Richard Snowden. Wide receiver, number four, Jamie Rocket Bryant. Uh, Running back, number five, Shantae Wynn. Wide receiver, number 10, Ziggy Bailey. Uh, second quarterback who will be subbing in and out will be number 11, Todd Carroll. Wide receiver, number 14, Aquan Chabaz. Offensive lineman, number 66, Cedric Stevenson. Offensive lineman, number 77, Joe Verna. Number 42, running back, Kevin Wolfolk. Remember last week I couldn't figure out who it was? <laughs> But it, number 42 is Kevin Wolfolk. Number 79, offensive lineman Todd Jenkins. Wide receiver, number 88, Vince Mooley. And number 81, um, excuse me, number, oh, does it? Number 88, Vince, Vinnie Mooley. Okay, so we are live here on Fat Cat Radio via the Sports Wire. And that's right, we have NEFL action. If you could hear in the background, Lenny Murdo, big blast from the past. He's my cousin. He was supposed to be joining me on uh, color commentary. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, he's going to do something that uh, he's better at, and that's going to be the PA announcing here at Falcon Field. Remember the kicker last week, who had a fantastic game. Uh, it was uh, well, kicker, kicker, uh, David Zemanski. Uh, he had uh, quite a few games, quite a few uh, extra points last week, and good kickoffs as well. The Panthers are two and one. They won the last two. They, after losing the first game, they lost, they won the past two games, 34 nothing and 35 nothing, respectively. And the Pioneer Valley Knights are actually only one and zero. Oh. From what I heard in their second game of the season, they had a really big brawl between the Connecticut between themselves and the Connecticut Chiefs. As uh, actually, that resulted in quite a few players being suspended for the season from both teams, and suspended from uh, suspended for three games from uh, each team as well. So that game was actually 21 to nothing in the first quarter, and ended the win given to the Chiefs. And then, uh, 
and then after that, it just didn't uh, pan out for this for the next game. They apparently had a forfeit, or the game just never took place. So it was uh, they are one and zero entering in this game. However, they are in second place, being undefeated. Um, and uh, let me actually get to the NEFL uh, website and uh, read you the updated Colonial Conference standings um, as we're here live. I actually, you know, I happen to enjoy this, that we are live here at Falcon Field. So the teams are getting ready on the field. So very quick, in the Northern Division, the Southern Maine Raging Bulls are 2-1, and one, and actually four teams are 2-1. Uh, Southern Maine Raging Bulls, the North Shore Generals, the Lowell Northeast, the Lowell Northeaster, and the Rhode Island War Dogs are all 2-1. and one. The Boston Bandits are 1-2, and two, and the Northeast Natives are 0-3. Oh the Southern Division, Western Connecticut Militia are 3-0. and oh. It looks as if the uh, Panthers won the toss, and they're going to receive in the, first, uh, in the first quarter, or the first half, I should say. Oh, Pioneer Valley Knights are one and one. Okay, so that's uh, that makes it a little easier. So the Connecticut Chiefs and the Panthers are both two and one, tied for second. Pa the Knights are one and one in fourth place. Harford Colts, formerly the Harford Whalers, are zero and three, and the Brass City Brawlers are now zero and two. So that game between the Knights and the Brawlers must be the game, that, the game that got canceled, or neither team had enough players. But we're going to set for the kickoff. I do not, unfortunately, I do not have a roster for the uh, Pioneer Valley Knights, which is no big surprise in semi-pro semi -pro football. But uh, number 23 is going to be kicking off for the Knights. As you're listening, the uh, Panthers are going to be going from left to right. The Knights going from right to left. The kickoff is up, and it is down, uh, landed at the about the 14-yard uh, line and rolled out of bounds, and the flag went down. <clears throat> All right, we are live on chat here as well. So if you want to chat and give your uh, give your um, so the Panthers, it's a twenty yard. Uh, they get a twenty yard added to where the ball landed by the ball going out of bounds. So it'll be first and ten from the thirty five. For the Panthers, short field to work with for the Panthers. You're listening live on Fat Cat Radio, the Pioneer Valley Knights at the Connecticut Panthers. Again, my name is Big Daddy Cool Vinny Apicella. We are live here in Meriden Falcon Field. All right. So, Snowden in the uh, shotgun. There's a handoff. And then uh, looks like uh, number, who was that that had the ball? That was number 42. That was Kevin Wolfolk. Got the handoff about a, about a yard. Uh, about a yard. So Snowden gets uh, in a shotgun. Wolfolk to his right. And he got three wide receivers to his right, one to his left. There's a snap. He's back to pass. Intended for number one. Nope, number... That was intended for number 14, no, Aquan Shabazz. Looked like number 14 from the Knights, who was guarding him. Tipped it and got, got in there, broke up the play. So it'll be third and 10 now. Third and nine, excuse me. Third and nine for the, Knight, for the Panthers. Panthers are white with black and red trim, and the Knights are black with orange trim. So here we go, and uh, Snowden in the shotgun again with with uh, Wolfolk to his left this time. There's a snap, and he's back to pass, and the pass is, is dropped by number 10, Ziggy Bailey. And it'll be a fourth and nine, and it looks like they're going to bring on the punting team. Well, that was a first, that was a, you know, a slow first drive, slow start for the game. Well, we shall see. Now, it we'll, we begs to see how the uh, suspensions are actually going to hurt the Pioneer Valley Knights. 
seeing as they have, I believe, three players on three-game suspension and one out for the season because of that brawl with the Chiefs a couple of weeks ago. So it looks like they're going back to punt. And uh, we've got uh, uh, Zemanski back to punt. Oh, high snap. The punt is up. And it's a pretty decent punt. It comes down at about the 32-yard line. Picked up by number 10, who's trying to scramble and get away. And he's getting away. He's running. He makes it past the 50, over to about the 48-yard line of the Panthers. So it's going to be a short field now for the Knights. All right, so it'll be first and 10 nights. It looks to be spotted at the 47 yard line, 48 yard line. No, about the 47 of the Knights. So less than 50 yards to go for the Knights. Let's see if this Panthers defense, who was absolutely phenomenal in their past two games, uh, could shut them down. So it looks like number 11 is the, is the quarterback for the Knights. It looks like he's going to be in the shotgun, or yeah, he's going to be in the I formation. Got a running back behind him. Got uh, looks to be two wide receivers to his uh, one wide receiver to his uh, left. He's going to be under quarterback. Uh, the quarterback, uh, yeah, he's going to be under center, and he's got three wide, two wide receivers to his left. And there's a snap handoff to number two or number twenty, who is just stuffed at the line. No gain at all. So it's second and ten now for the Pioneer Valley Knights. Looks like we've got a pretty good turnout. You know, and <laughs> stands aren't packed, but we got some people here. All right, so back uh, under center, under center number eleven. He's got. Uh, Two wide receivers to his left, looks like two to his right, and the running back behind him. Single back formation. And there's a snap. Hand, uh, hand off again, and he's stuffed. Wow! That was number 40. Uh, turn around, I can't see your number. 45. Number 45, Gerald Patrick, linebacker. He gave him a spear that was close to what Goldberg or Roman Reigns could do. And that drop, that was a loss of two. And it brought him back to the Panthers' 49-yard line. So it'll be now third and 12 for the Knights. So number 11, the quarterback, in the shotgun. He's got his, uh, his running back to his right. He's got uh, two wide receivers to his left, one to his right, uh, two to his right as well. There's the snap. He's back to pass, and he's taken down for a sack. He gets he taken back over to the to their own 44-yard line, and now it'll be fourth and about 18. So it looks like they're going to have to punt. And what a sack! And I believe that would. Yeah, that'll be about the 4th and 20. 4th and 18, 4th and 20. What a play. And that was... Uh, Jamie Rocket Bryant back to receive for the uh, punt. And the Panthers just shut him down on the defense, which is what they're known for. Coach, uh, defensive coordinator Warren Pollard. There's the, there's the punt. It's a high punt, and Bryant lets it drop and gets it at about the ten. He's running to the to his right. He's running to his right. Gets down, brings it down to about the 28 yard line of the Panthers. So that's a good uh, 18 yard run back by the by uh, Jamie Rocket Bryant here for the Panthers. So after that, so after the first series. It's still nothing, nothing. We're still in the for first quarter. 
first and ten Panthers from the 29 yard line from their own 29 they have a decent sized field to work with and the Panthers in the huddle as I was saying before defensive coordinator Warren Pollard for the uh, Panthers has the defense in ship tip top shape all right, and still got uh, Richard Snowden in a quarterback. He's in the shotgun. He's got a back to his left. Two wide receivers to his right, two to his left. There's a the snap and the handoff. And the handoff going up the middle. And that was number 42, Kevin Wolfolk, uh, who took that. It looks to be about a five-yard gain, six yards maybe. So it was. So it's now second and four. And Snowden in the shotgun again. Same setup. Fake to Wolfolk. Pass to number... Who's that? That was a pass to number... Looks like Kyle... Uh, Can't find his name on here. <laughs> okay, well, Kyle Watkins was catch lost on the yards. There's a snap, and he's skying it outward. Number intercepted, and the Knights are running back past the 50 to the 40, out of bounds, about the 32 of the Panthers, and that was uh, Snowden who had uh, intended to have Kareem Robinson number one receive it. It was picked off by the Knights, and it's going the other way. And beautiful interception return for the Knights. And now it's going to be first and ten for the Knights from the Panthers at the 36-yard uh, line. The Panthers 36, so short, short field to play with for the Knights. All right, so uh, we are still here. <laughs> so we got the Panthers on defense now. It's a uh, long week. All right, so uh, shotgun formation. Number 11, the quarterback for the Knights. One, one back to his right. There's a snap. Back to pass. It's up high. And it's incomplete to number 17. So it'll be second and 10 now for the Knights. So far in the uh, single A division, let's go over some scores while we're here for, for this week. Uh, only one final so far. Um, let me try to get this. Uh, there we go. Only one final for now. Uh, it is. It was the... Uh, Northeastern Empire defeating the Twin City Riot in Orono, Maine. That's the only game that's final so far, and they're only in the single A. So we still got uh, quite a few games to go this week. All right, so number 11 in the shotgun again. There's a snap and the handoff, and he's brought down. Loss of yards, about four. Four or three. So it'll be, uh, now it'll be third and 13 from the 39. Jerome Carrion on the tackle for the Panthers. Jerome Perry, excuse me, on the tackle. Uh, just some other games around the league in the AAA division. The uh, Western Connecticut Militia are currently taking on the Brass City Brawlers. Uh, the North Shore Generals are going against the Bull Nor'easter. Southern Maine Raging Bulls against the Rhode Island War Dogs. And number 11 in the shotgun. And there's a snap, high snap, but he recovers. There's the pass. It is incomplete. And it looked like it was mistimed. And uh, number 21 uh, overran it and tried to come back, fell over. So it'll be fourth and 13. And it looks like they're going to have to punt it away. So another great uh, series for the Knights, for the Panthers.
And then the Hartford Colts are playing at the Connecticut Chiefs at Strong Stadium in West Haven today as well. And the Northeast Natives are at the Boston Bandits in Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. So the Knights take the take take a timeout, and that's their first timeout of the game. So while we're here, uh, while we're waiting for the timeout, I do want to say to tune in to the uh, tune in to the Sports Wire. We drop uh, two. Um, podcasts every week right here on Fat Cat Radio. You can always listen anywhere, anytime by getting the Spreaker app uh, on Android or, or uh, Apple, uh, iPhone, iPad, iPod, whatever you want to listen to it. Go to Spreaker.com slash show slash sports dash wire to listen to us. Uh, you can also go online to uh, www.swe-ct.com www.myfatcatradio.com then we have Facebook.com slash SportswireCT, Facebook.com slash BDC Vinny Apicella, and Facebook.com slash Fat Cat Radio Enterprise. You can also subscribe to us on iTunes by going to iTunes, going to the podcast page, search for Sportswire, look for our Flame logo, and that way every home game from the Panthers and Sportswire podcast will be di- delivered directly to your listening apparatus be it iPod, iPhone, iPad. Number 23 for the uh, Knights back to punt. And we have, who do we have back there to receive? Number Jamie Rocket Bryant, the wide receiver back to receive. Again, he's in the end zone or right at the zero yard line. So he's looking to have another big punt. There's a snap and it's a fake. And number 23 is running with it. There's a flag on the field, two flags, and he runs out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. He didn't get past the first-yard marker, so it'll be a turnover on downs regardless. And what's that sign for? That's holding on the kicking team against the Knights. Holding against the Knights. So that should all be negated. And... uh, Holding for an offense. The penalty is declined, so it'll be first and ten for the Panthers from, it looks to be, where are they spotting the ball? From the 30, yeah, 39 yard line. So first and ten from the 39 yard line. As the chain gang gets their, uh, their, gets their jobs in order and where they have to go. First and ten Panthers from their own 39. Short field to work with. It looks to be Snowden again in, in their quarterback. Both folk to his left. Three receivers to his right. One to his left. And there's a snap. And it's a handoff to Wolfolk. Wolfolk to his right. Scrambling up the middle. Gets brought down. And it should get forward progress. Maybe about a yard. Yeah, it looks like he picked up a yard. Or two yards to the 41. So it'll be second and eight. So it's second and eight for the Panthers. You are listening to the Connecticut Panthers football on Fat Cat Radio. And they're ready for the snap again. Snowden in the shotgun. Wolfark to his right. It's a low snap. He recovers. But uh, he's ready for pass. It's aired out to number eight. And it's caught. Number four. That was Jamie Rocket Bryant. It is touchdown Panthers. Touchdown Panthers. That makes it six nothing, and that's over fifty yards. It looks like the referees are conferring, and it looks like it's going to be taken back. Yeah, there's no flag down, but the ball's coming back for what reason? Illegal, wow, illegal formation against the Panthers. That's just absolute craziness. 
So that'll, that whole touch I'll be taken back. It's a five-yard penalty. Or looks to me a 10-yard penalty. No, it'll be a five-yard penalty. So it'll be the 35-yard line, second and 13. And that was just nuts. That was nuts. So that whole touchdown pass was negated because of that. All right. Snowden in the shotgun. Back to pass. And he's holding it. He's looking for a receiver. He's scrambling to his right. He gets past the defenders, past the first line. He gets past the 50. He gets all the way to the 49, and then a flag comes out. And we got some more dirty laundry. So Snowden, uh, Snowden got out of bounds at about the 49 after running himself. Then there's flags all over the place. So we got to figure out what the heck just happened. So, all right, so it'll be a penalty on the Knights. Uh, against the Knights. So it goes to the Knights 34-yard line, gets added to the end of the play. So now it'll be first down Panthers from the 34. So Richard Snowden with a great run to get him over to the, uh, to get them up and then the, Penalty on top of it. So Snowden in a single in a single back for, uh, eye formation. He's got uh, two receivers on his right, two to his left. He's got his back behind him, and there's a pass or there's the snap over to number twenty, Kyle Watkins, and Watkins gets about six yards up to the twenty nine, uh, twenty eight. Excuse me, seven yards. Pick up up about six yards. So it'll be second and four. They're going with no huddle. And uh, there's a snap. Snowden back to the, for the pass. Gets Watkins again, who gets it and falls out of bounds for the first down. So it'll be, that'll be a five-yard pass. It'll be first down for the Panthers. No huddle again. All right, back in shotgun formation. There's the snap, and it's a handoff to Wolfolk again. And Wolfolk gets clobbered. He gets mobbed and loss of five. Uh, they're only spotting it. Okay, so they're getting some loss of only two. So it'll be loss of three. Second and loss of two, second and 12 from it looks like the 30, uh, 25 of the Knights. All right, no sh no huddle again, and Snowden in the shotgun. And there's a snap. He's back to pass. He's passes incomplete, short for Kyle Watkins. Oh, you could actually go live on Facebook now. I didn't realize that. All right, well. All right, now they're in a huddle. <laughs> Looks to be they're doing a little bit too fast pace. All right, so we're at third and 12. Third and 12 for the Panthers. And Snowden is back. And the shotgun, Wolfolk to, Wolfolk to his left. One receiver to his left, three to his right. There's the snap. He fakes a pass. And he's taking it himself up the middle, over to the sideline. 2015. He's out of bounds at about the 12. And there's flags all over the place. 
more dirty laundry on the field. So he did go out of bounds at uh, the, t looks like the 14 they're spotting it at. Or they're sta that's where all the flags came out, about the 14. Referee's conferring. Looks like Zebra's in a cage. And what's the verdict? Personal foul against the Knights. Looks to be half the distance to the goal or 10 yards, and it's going to be first and goal from the three for the Panthers. So, after a lot of hard work, they might get the touchdown that they so richly deserve anyways. Todd Carroll is now in at quarterback. Carroll in shotgun. Wolf look to his left. There's a, there's a fake handoff. Pass to number four, Jamie Bryant, and it's a touchdown. Wow. Touchdown, Panthers. Touchdown, Panthers. And it's now 6 nothing again. <laughs> 6 nothing Panthers. So, uh... Got David Zemanski in there f for the extra point. And that touchdown was brought to you by the Sportswire. <laughs> Number 88 is spotting it, or holding it for Zemanski. And number 88 is Vinny Mooley, wide receiver. He's t got it. There's that. The ball has been tipped. No good. And it's no good, so it remains 6 nothing Panthers. Hey, this is Vanessa from Pro's Productions. Make sure you check out Swizz and White Peace on his radio show, Fat Cat Radio. All right, and that was just a spot for our buddy Twiz and White Peace, who does a show right here on Fat Cat Radio. I believe it's like two or three nights a week. Check it out. So we uh, we also wanted to mention that uh, M and J video games and collectibles. Uh, Matter of fact, let me actually just go on and actually look it up, make sure I get the correct, uh, actually get the correct dates and times and everything for their grand reopening in Wallingford. All right, so uh, Zmanski's getting set to kick it off. Number three is back for the Knights. All right, so we are still here from Meriden. Six on the, there's a the kick, big kick, and it looks like it's caught by number three, and the night, and the night, number seven, excuse me, and uh, he's going to the right. He's being brought down at about the 25, maybe the 26 by the Panthers. All right, so it looks like the ball is marked at the 27-yard line. Panthers defense on the field with the Knights offense. So it'll be first and 10 for the, for the Knights. All right, so the Knights took their second time out. The Knights are taking their second time out for the first half. We're still in the first quarter. All 
right, so the knights are entering up to the line. All right, so we're still waiting here for uh, knights getting into position. Quarterback number 11 in the shotgun. There's a snap. Handoff to number, looked like 24. Handoff to number 20. Uh, can't see your, yeah, number 20. Uh, looks like a gain of about three inches. Not even, looks like maybe made it up to maybe a yard. So it'll be second and nine. So it's still second and ten. All right, so we're back. Number 11 under is uh, back in the shotgun formation. One back to his left. Three wide receivers to his right. Left, one to his right. And he's back to pass. Short pass. Intercepted. Number 44. And that's a pick at six. Number 44. Number Andrew Pratt, Andrew Pratt with a touchdown. That was a beautiful interception by Andrew Pratt, bringing it into the end zone. Four touchdown it is now 12 to nothing Panthers as they get set up for the point after attempt. And yes, that was Megadeth's Crush em. One of my personal favorite songs that I just played there for the touchdown. The man's, oh no, they went for two. Inside handoff, and did they make it? They, they did not make it. Carroll handed off to, uh, Carroll handed off to number, all right, number five. And that was Shante Wynn, and he did not make it into the end zone, so it's 12 nothing Panthers, and that is the end of the first quarter. That is, yeah, the end of the first quarter. Your Panthers have 12, and the Knights have zero. Folks, that's right. We have a 12 nothing at the end of the first quarter in favor of the Panthers. So we are getting set. The Panthers will now flip and go towards the left with the Knights going towards the right. Number uh, got two uh, wide receivers back. The kickoff, the kickoff is high. Number seven grabs it about the 10, and he's bringing it up past the 20. He's past the 30. He's getting to the 38 to the 40. Finally, before the Panthers bring him down, a good 30-yard return for the Knights number seven. And we are first and 10 for the Pioneer Valley Knights at the Panthers for, at their own 40-yard line. All right, uh, so folks, if you're uh, listening, I want to say hey, say, uh, you know, come on, join the conversation, join the chat. Rashad McKenzie on the tackle for the Knights. <clears throat> so the ball is marked at the 41. So it'll be uh, first and ten from the from the Panthers forty for the Knights forty one yard line, and uh, 
Number 11 back in the shotgun for the Knights. There's the snap. Fake handoff, and he's keeping it, and he's brought it right back up to the line of scrimmage. Actually lost the yard, so it'll be second and 11 from the 40. The Panthers defense holding their own. All right, so we are still uh, waiting some more scores here from the uh, from this week from the NEFL. All right, so we're back. Number 11 in the shotgun with the snap. He's back to pass. He gets stumbled for a bit. Flag down. And the fumble recovered by the Knights. We got to see what the flag's all about. Let's find out. The Zebras are conferring. Looks to be looks uh, possible hold. It did see it did seem like the quarterback got held up for a second. And they wave off the flag. So it'll be third and it looks like they waved off the flags. I think. Or there's there's more conferring going on. And he's coming back out. <laughs> the flag has been waved off, so it'll end up being third and it looks like about seven at the 44 at the Knights own 44 yard line <coughs> yep so it'll be a third and yeah pretty long six for the for the Knights All right, so in the shotgun again, number 11 for the Knights. There's a snap. There's a pass, and it's batted down. Number eight, Tylee Flowers, linebacker, on this breakup. Or, I'm sorry, that was number six, Antoine Carr. He was on the breakup. Sometimes the six and the eight in the numbers, <laughs> they just look alike. All right, so number four is back. Uh, that's Jamie Rocket Bryant. He's back to receive a punt because it is fourth and six. Fourth and six, fourth and seven, or fourth and six and a half. All right, last time it was a fake punt, if I remember correctly. All right, so there's 23. The punt is up. And it bounces at about the 22, picked up by number 40 of the Knights. So that's where we will begin the drive. First and 10 for the Panthers from the 22, 21-yard line, from their own 21-yard line. We are in the second quarter here. Relatively good pace going for the game. And it is 12-0. Panthers. And we got number, we got uh, who we have at quarterback now. Snowden back at quarterback in shotgun. Number four, Br uh, Bryant in motion. He's back to pass, and he's he does. He completes the pass, but he's immediately stuffed. Bryant tackled just about automatically by the Knights' defense. Gotcha. 
All right, so it's a two-yard loss, or one-yard loss. Second and 11. And there's a snap. Oh, no, it's a fumble. Picked up by Bryant and goes out of bounds at about the about the seven yard line. So long that pass that uh, snap was uh, severely off, and it's going to be third and uh, twenty. Third and twenty. Third and twenty five. They're actually in there just about their own end zone. Snowden is still back in the uh, shotgun. Oh, and it's another fumble. And, uh, but, all right, that's just, all right, what did happen? That was a snap to uh, Wolfolk. He passed to Bryant. He got it to about the 20. He got it to about the 20. And it's still going to be fourth and uh, 12. So they're going to have to punch it away. But at least they got got out of their own uh, end zone. No no threat of safety. Okay. So it'll be 4th and 14 for the Panthers from the uh, from their own 18-yard line. All right. So it's uh, Zemanski's back to punt. There's a snap. The punt is high. Number 10 is back to receive it. Let's it bounce, and it goes out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. So that's where the Knights will take over at their own 48. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. So it looks like they're marking the ball at the 45, yet the ball never even made it to the 45-yard line. The ball went out of bounds at about the 48, landed at about the 47, and they're marking it at the 45. I'm not talking anything about the, about the referees, but I'm just giving you the facts. So it'll be first and 10 for the Knights from the 45. <clears throat> 12 nothing Panthers here in the... Second quarter. We have no idea how much time is left. But either way. Alright, so uh, the Knights having a little confusion on the field. Looks like they wanted to flip the flip the play, but nobody got the word. So now it'll be three receivers to the left, one to the right, in the uh, one running back. There's the snap, and it's uh, past number seven, who's got the ball. He's got the first down and more. Brings it down to the Panthers' 35-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from the, from, uh, the Panthers' 35. Talk about craziness. So it'll be actually marked at the Panthers' 38-yard line. A three-yard gift. All right. So uh, number 11 for the Knights is actually back in the shotgun again. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. One back is with him to his right. And there's the snap. Levin back to pass. There's a bullet pass intended for number 20. Can't tell because his shirt is tied up. So uh, incomplete pass. It was underthrown. So it'll be second and 10 from the Panthers' 48-yard uh, line. As the Knights are in huddle, they break the huddle, they go to the line. Tell you, with, with, with a depleted, they, they don't have a depleted 
lineup, but with people on suspension, you, you'd uh, probably see how tired you can get. Number 11 in the shotgun. There's a, ba there's a snap. Back to pass. It's aired out. It is too far aired out as it's overthrown to number 7, and we will go with 3rd and 10. So it'll be now third and ten from the 48 for the Knights. Cur uh, in the single A division, the uh, Port City Vipers go into Pittsfield, Mass, to take on the North Berkshire Kings. The Mid Coast Falcons go into Raymond, New Hampshire, to take on the Granite State Destroyers. Southern Connecticut Sting, their game was postponed with the Connecticut Gamblers in Tallinn. And rescheduled till September 19th was the Metro West Colonials against the Monadunk, Monadnik Marauders from New Hampshire. So it'll be third and ten now. And eleven in shotgun. Single back formation to his left. And there's a snap. Back to pass. And the pass is high and caught. Nope, dropped by number ten. Incomplete. Number 45. Gerald Patrick with uh, great coverage on that one. So it'll be 4th and 10 from the 48. And will they go for it? Will they punt it? We don't know. Too far for a field goal, I would assume. From the 38-yard line, not the 48-yard line. Excuse me. All right, so you hear the crowd getting behind the defense. About the, you know, 25 or 30 people here. All right, so looks like they're going for it in an I formation. Nope, sh uh, uh, shotgun. Number 11 with one uh, receiver, one running back in front of them. Four receivers, two to the right, two to the left. And there is the snap. Oh, he punts it. It was a quick punt, and uh, wasn't expecting that. But it goes out of bounds at about the 15 at the Panthers' own 15-yard line. That's where the Panthers will take over at the 15. I don't think anybody was expecting a punt there, or ex it, just by the way they lined up, I should say. So now the Panthers will take over at their own 15-yard line. All right, so the Panthers offense comes up to the line of scrimmage and Snowden in there with two running backs, one to the right, one to the left, and uh, three receivers. There's a handoff to number nine. He's got the run. That's number nine, Corey Williams. And he gets up to the 39, where are we, 34-yard line. So it'll be first and 10. And that was, uh, yeah, Corey Williams, number nine. With the carry. So, again, two running back formation, two right receiver, uh, right receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation, fake handoff. This time he gives it to Wolfolk, who lined up to his left, and he gets it up maybe about a yard. So it'll be second and, uh, or two yard gain, second and eight from the 37 yard line. And again, no huddle, same formation. There's a snap, he's back to pass, and he right through the arms of number 15, Jason Davis, and it was incomplete. He had a great pass. He was wide open. Unfortunately, the pass went right through his arms. Unfortunately, it's missed time, miscommunication. Missed time on that one. All right, so the huddle is, uh, oh, and I'm sorry, that, that other run was number 13, Casey Brown. That was not Wolfolk. So it was uh, Corey Williams and then, then uh, Casey Brown. All right, so there's a snap. Snowden takes it himself up to the 42-yard line, 41-yard line. So it'll end up being fourth and about 
four. Will they go for it? Will they stop it? All right, so it looks like the punting team is on. Zemanski is back to punt. And number seven is back to receive the punt for the Knights. And there's the snap. It is The punt is up. And it looks to be like it's going to die right at the 35. 35 yard line, number 14, Aquan Shabazz picks it up, deadens the ball, and it's going to be first and 10 for the Knights from their own 35. So, going forward, as I said, uh, to, for the uh, now we're in the double A division, double uh, A conference, the Southern New Hampshire Beavers go into Cranston, Rhode Island to take on the Rhode Island Ripple, or Riptide. Uh, Central Mass Saber Cats taking on the New London County Sharks in Pawkatuck. And that game should be just about over at 4 p.m. start. Uh, Somerville Rampage go into Hanover, Massachusetts, take on the South Shore Chiefs. The Worcester Wildcats go into Danielson, Connecticut, to take on the Green Valley Blackhawks. The Whaling City Clippers are going to Mansfield, Massachusetts, to take on the Southern New England Rage. And the Mystic River Tigers are taking on the New Hampshire Wolfpack in Manchester, New Hampshire. So we actually have a lot more than just, we have a lot more Connecticut uh, teams here in the NEFL between the single A, double A, and triple A divisions. All right, so uh, number 11 of the Knights brings his team up to the line. And number 11 will be in shotgun formation. One, one back to his right. Two riders, uh, one wide receiver to his right, three to his left. There's the snap. A quick pass number seven, and seven catches it, and he's got the first down plus more. And he makes it about 15 yards to the 50, 49-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Knights from the 49-yard line. So now that Great Panthers defense is, is on their heels. So number 11 is in the shotgun formation again. One running back to his left. And there's the snap. Handoff to the running back. And it's he's stuffed. And he's held at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Matter of fact, looks like he, yeah, he's just staying at 49. So it'll be second and 10. Folks, if you want to come down to the game here in Falcon Field, it's, you can still get in. Adults are just 10 bucks. Kids under 12 are free. The next home game for the Knights, the next time we're here at Falcon Field. Well, that's not where I want to go. I want to go. All right, uh, let's see. The next time, Next time the Panthers are at home will be on August 29th against the Western Connecticut Militia. Again, 6.30 game time, 6 o'clock, the uh, gates are open. Number 11 in the shotgun, three receivers to his right, very low snap, and he takes it himself, but he's brought down at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10. And that's that awesome Knights def uh, Panthers defense. So it'll be third and ten now for the for the Knights from the from their own 48 49 yard line. Number 11 in the shotgun.
There's a snap. He's got it. He's back to pass. He airs it out. Flags all over the place. Pass intended for his wide receiver, number 39. Uh, dirty laundry on the field. And let's see what the flags are for. So it'll bring up fourth and ten, if not more. <laughs> Holding on the Knights. Passes the penalty is declined. It'll be fourth and ten. You know, this is the only league that I ever see decline penalties. I don't think I've ever seen that in the NFL. Well, maybe a couple times, but still. All right. So, number 23 is back to punt. And let's see who we got in the back there. Is that uh, Bryant again? It looks to me like Jamie Rocket Bryant is uh, back to receive the punt. There's the snap, and the punt is up. It's a very high pop-up punt, and it's going to drop in there and go out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. So it's going to be first and 10 Panthers from the 36. We should be approaching the end of the first half any time now. All right, so the, let's see who we got. Snowden back at quarterback. Two receiver, two running backs with him. One receiver to his left, one to his right. He's in the pro formation. And number, number 13 gets a handoff. There's flags on the field. 13 gets all gets up the way to the to their own 45, 46 yard line, and that was number 13, Casey Brown. But what is? And it's a first down. It looks like the penalties were waved off, and it's going to end up being first and 10 from the 47, from their own 47. So they're chipping away at that field. Again, two backs, there's a snap, handoff to number, who's that, number, f all right, there was a handoff there to number nine, Corey Williams, and uh, he lost some, uh, he lost some yards, but there was also a couple of flags thrown out there. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty. First personal foul against the Knights, 15-yard penalty. First down for the Panthers. So the ball is going to now be spotted at the 30. No, nope, at the 43-yard line. So it'll be it was only a 5-yard penalty. First and 10 Panthers. I always thought personal fouls were 15 yards. So it'll be five yard penalty. Snowden in the shotgun. Two running backs with him. He holds on to the ball. And he's skying it to where, to who, and oh, there's pass interference if I ever saw it. There's flags there. It's pass interference at the five yard line. That was pass interference if I ever saw it because he brought him down to the tackle. He was going directly for the player, not for the ball. But the ball's coming back. It's not, they're not bringing it up to where it should be. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 yard penalty. So it wasn't pass interference, but it was against the defense. So it'll be first and 10 from the 28 yard line. 
All right, so Snowden, Richard Snowden back in at quarterback with uh, number three. Uh, three is Snowden. And there's four backs now. And he hands off to number seven. And that's number seven, Andre Aileen. Andrew Aileen gets the handoff and goes up to the, to the line of scrimmage. Doesn't get much after that. So it'll end up being second and uh, actually got two yards, two or three yards on the play. So it'll be second and now six from the 35. All right, so Snowden back in at center with three running backs with, around him. Only two wide receivers out there. There's a snap, fake handoff. There's a pass. Caught, no, dropped. It was dropped. Intended for number four, Jamie Rocket Bryant. Nope, was that number four yet? He looks like he had it, but he ended up dropping it. All right. All right, the Panthers are in a huddle. It's third and six from their from the Knights' 35. All right, Snowden back in the shop. Three running backs with him. Kyle Watkins, unfortunately, was over his head and over the defender's head, too, luckily. So it will not be an, in, an incomplete, but it's uh, going to end up being a fourth down. So we've got fourth and uh, six now. No, yeah, fourth and six. And uh, Zemanski is looking. They're going for the field goal. So that'll be uh, 35, maybe a 40 yarder. 42 yarder. Vinny Mooley is holding. Zemanski is uh, ready for the kick. So the Knights took their third timeout. So uh, while we're while we're in timeout mode, So while uh, the Knights are in timeout mode, I'm going to try to find M and J uh, video games. Uh, they're having a couple of autograph signings coming up. All right, so uh, Zemanski's back for the for the field goal. The kick is up. It is good. It is good. And it's now 15 nothing Panthers. And that hit the crossbar and and bounced right over, but it's still good either way. All right. All right, so August 14th, which is a week from today, uh, I'm sorry, a week from uh, yesterday, from August 14th at 5 p.m. to August 16th at 7 p.m., it'll be the grand opening of M&J First Base Sports Cards and Memorabilia on 38th Center Street in Wallingford, Connecticut. It'll be grand opening weekend, 
And let's see, there will be, I do believe, a, yes, WWE and WCW legend wrestler Brutus the Barber Beefcake will be there. Um, and uh, autographs are 15 bucks as we get set for the kickoff. All right. Zemanski back for the kick, and the kick is up. And uh, number seven retrieves, receives it, and it starts to trot upfield. And he gets up to gets up to about the 30, 31, 31 yard line, maybe the 32 yard line. So it'll be first and ten for the Knights from their own 32. So as I was saying, M and J first cards, M and G M and J video games, and first base sports cards and collectibles. Okay, on the 15th. There will be uh, the Hartford Wolfpack mascot sonar, along with Rocky the Rock Cat. And uh, from 11 to 2, the daughter of Babe Ruth, Linda Ruth Tosetti, will be signing in honor of her grandfather. I'm sorry, she's a granddaughter of Babe Ruth. She will be there from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the 15th. And then on the 16th, WWE Hall of Famer Tammy Sitch will be there from 12 to 3. Uh, it's free to enter, so sign up to win prizes. That's the end of the first half. The score is 15 nothing. Panthers 15, Knights nothing. All right.
I, I see a nice game. The uh, Knights haven't been able to show much offense because the quarterback is constantly under pressure. Yeah. I love it. You <laughs> start with defense, and this is one heck of a defensive game. You're absolutely right. It kind of takes us back to the, the New England Knights of old. Yeah, I remember, uh, I don't know if the record still holds, but uh, we played an 11-game season. We gave up five points. Wow. That's, a, uh, that's impressive. Yeah, there was a field goal and a safety, and that was it. Wow. So only three of the points were against the defense. Record, I don't know if it's ever been broken, but we're pretty proud of that. That's true. That that I, I would I would be proud of that too. Uh, so, you, now you t- you were telling me that you're working with the Bridgeport Ravens. What league are they in? Yeah, they're in the uh, Triborough League. It's basically um, New York. Most of the teams out of Brooklyn, and uh, we've been playing our home games at Kennedy Stadium in Bridgeport. It's uh, a mishmash between the uh, Connecticut. We were the so many different nights. Um, we eventually were the New England Knights. Um, broke up a little bit, and the Bridgeport Gators were breaking up. So okay, yep. we got together, and uh, the first year they f- listened to Coach Volpe, who you know very yep. well. Um, and Semi-pro we football Hall of Famer. Yeah, four different minor league Hall of Fames. Um, Greg took us to an 10-1 and record that year. Uh, we went down to Florida, and we won the bowl again for our seventh time uh, for and, um, this year the team just didn't gel it seemed like it was fact who used to be a gator and uh, we ended up seven two and one but um, the games were ugly and uh, it wasn't the best football I've seen I don't know what's going to happen with that franchise uh, but I'll tell you, I think I found a new home. I mean, this uh, we played in the NFL years ago. We won some NEFL championships um, with the with the Knights, and uh, this Connecticut Panther team winning another championship this year. They're that good. They absolutely are. I want to give a shout out to the head coach Mark Welch uh, and their their defensive coordinator Warren Pollard. Um, Three assistant coaches are Aaron Barksdale, Kendall Brown, and Kevin Moses. They have a fantastic team, and uh, you're more than welcome to come on here with the Panthers. Uh, you know whether you're going to do the PA or be on color commentary with me. You're more than welcome to join us. Well, let's make that a date. All right, that sounds good to me. The next home game, and folks, as a as of now, we're only broadcasting the home games. Um, the next home game will be on August 29th, three weeks from. T- uh, Two weeks from today. No, three weeks from today. And, uh, you know, li- uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, hopefully, if the uh, if everything turns out well for the, uh, you know, for, for the broadcasting here, hopefully by next year we'll be able to bring you all the games. Because it does seem more, you know, useful will bring you the away games. This way, you know, when the team is on the road, uh, you won't have to worry so much about, you know, missing them if you're going to listen to them on the <laughs> on the Internet. Uh, come to the home games. We want you to come out here to the stadium and experience it because, as Lenny can tell you, you know, you're never going to find better football because these guys play for passion. Yeah, a couple of things I'd like to mention, Vinny. First of all, it makes more sense to have the away games broadcast back to Connecticut because not everybody could get away for a full day on the weekend for football where when the team is home, you know, a couple of hours you're here, you watch the team. Uh, And like I keep saying, you know, the fans are the 12th man on the field. They really get the team fired up. Um, I would say all you bloggers and everybody who's on Facebook, uh, let the Panthers know that you want the away games broadcast, that, you know, you want to come out to the home games, throw some money in the coffers, but it's hard to get away for the road games, and you'd still like to follow your team. 
and uh, you know, why wait for the game to be over and have somebody to tell you about it when you could have the excitement of listening to it while you're going about your daily chores? Absolutely. All right, so I see the Knights uh, coming back onto the field. So let's just briefly go over what's happened in the game so far. Um, obviously, the Knights are, are up 15 nothing, and um, uh, so the Knights the Knights are up 15 nothing, and uh, we see the uh, teams coming back out onto the. I could give you a scoring recap right. if you like. Go right ahead. Uh, in the first quarter, an eight-yard pass from Todd Carroll to Jamie Bryant made it six nothing. Uh, the point after was blocked. About five minutes after that, we had an interception from Andrew Pratt, who carried it 32 yards into the end zone for a 12 nothing lead. We went for two, but we were stopped at the one-yard line. So uh, at the end of the first period, it was 12 nothing. Second quarter was kind of slow, although we kept getting the ball deep in our uh, side of the field, but we kept moving it up the field, but only far enough for one time where uh, David Szymanski had a 38-yard field goal for three points, and that's where the score is now, 15 nothing at the half. Thank you very much for that, Lenny. Um, you know, as, as you're listening here, you could definitely uh, the all the way to listen to the Panthers. As of now, they have uh, they are part of the SportsWire um uh, podcast feed this way you can go on to spreaker.com slash show slash sportswire and uh, listen to the episodes or through the Spreaker uh, app for your uh, iPhone or Android you can also go on to facebook.com slash uh, sportswire ct facebook.com slash bdc vinnie apicella facebook.com slash fat cat radio enterprise you can go to uh, www.swe-ct.com and www.myfactradio.com. You can also subscribe to the Sportswire on iTunes. You can go to iTunes, go to the podcast page, click on podcasts and uh, search Sportswire. Uh, look for our Flame logo, and this way you'll get every Sportswire episode and every Connecticut Panthers game that we broadcast delivered directly to your listening apparatus, be it iPhone, iPad, iPod, uh, um, and anything you do with your with your uh, iTunes. All right, so it looks like the teams are getting ready for the second half. Lenny, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Vince, it's always great to do work with you. Uh, I really look forward to the rest of the season. And uh, thank you. I'm a Panther Cub, I guess, and I want to be part of this Panther family. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lenny. Okay, that was Lenny Murdo, the uh, the brand new PA announcer here for the uh, Connecticut Panthers. So uh, I'm getting, they're getting ready for the kick, and um, I will be right back as I switch everything over. Wow! Wow!